Good afternoon. Oh yeah. We're it's, back. I know, squinty as well. Sun's out. Me. Sun's out, guns out. Well, no guns out. <laughs> so. We've some... never done this, have we? I don't think so. Mate, why have we never done this? Uh, I don't know. Right, so, Davey and I come to the great idea that we should do a R8 buyer's guide. <laughs> <laughs> like, step one of a YouTube channel, right? Yeah. For an R8 Lamborghini sort of workshop. So. Yeah, we're outside, obviously we'll get this one in in a minute, um, but just, I suppose, we'll run through some of the differences uh, and then, is it open? It's not open, we'll get the keys to open it. Uh, and then some things to watch out for if you're gonna look at them. So, it should be quite popular. We get asked loads, we get, get asked quite a bit. So, this is a 2011 R8 V10. So this is what we would call a pre-facelift. So there's obviously the V8, and then the V10 started two years later, 2009. V8 started 2007. And then they run up to 2013, and then that's then called the facelift. And the facelift runs to a 15, and then a 15 onwards is a Gen 2. So the easy way to tell a V8 from a V10 is the side blades. So the V10's got the kick, here and a V8 has got a flat blade. We will do one on a V8 because underneath there is some differences. Um, so we will do a V8 video, but chassis wise, majority is the same. So if you look at one quickly, side blade tells you. So that's a V10 blade. It's got that little ledge there, got the little kick out from a door handle. Yep. Right. If you look at the front, you've got two blades in the front grille. A V8 has got three. So if you look, I can look at a front bumper, I can look at a back bumper, I can look at the side of an R8 and know what it is. I can look at a back bumper and know whether it's a facelift or a pre-facelift. So two fins is a 10, three fins is a V8. There's some differences with headlights. So you've obviously got, these are what we call phase two lights. So phase one lights uh, got LED DRLs along the bottom, but they've got big gaps between the LEDs. That's mainly a V8 thing. So when you look at the V8, you'll tell. Um, and they've normally got halogen lights. So these are LEDs with DRL, right? So these are phase, what we call phase two lights. If you look at that one, that's a phase three light. You see a difference? Have a look. So this has got the stripe across the front of light. Now, because this is a facelift V10, this has got three fins as well, but they're completely different. But to give you an idea, that's a facelift headlight. So straight away, look at headlight, I know that's a facelift. Yep. I can look at the old headlights and know that's a V8, and then I can look at these headlights and know the V10. Twin tips, twin round tips is a V8. Oval tip is a V10. And a round tip then is either a facelift or a GT. But a GT will have a spoiler. And you know it's a GT because it says GT. But so again, look at the rear, bump, rear bumper and you go, right, so that's a V10. V10 pre facelift, so I know straight away that's between a 9 and a 13. Yep. Uh, then you can get plastic rear diffuser or you can get carbon rear diffusers. Uh, none of them have a fixed spoiler except the GT, so they'll all have fold up spoilers. None of them, I say none, there are a few exceptions. 99% will have steel brakes, so they'll have eight pot fronts uh, and four pot rears and split pads. So there's one, two, three, four, four pads in each axle on the front. So there's eight pads all together. 365 mil discs, something like that. Uh, separate handbrake caliper. Uh, 235, 30, 19 fronts. And 295, 35. <laughs> no. 235, 35, 19s on the front. Two nine five thirty nineteens on a rear or a two four five and a three oh five. Getting geeky now, lad. <laughs> Depending on the year. So what we normally tell people is uh the wheels are the same size, the tire section's different. Go two four five, three oh five. Never mix. So never be a two three five and a three oh five. Always keeping the same. Um and we normally tell people to kick up the tire width because P4S's, cup twos are easier to get in two four fives and three oh fives. <sighs> right, take a breath. What else? What are we missing? Wow, well, that's a good intro. Yeah, I know, I can keep going. <laughs> I get like proper need a girlfriend. Let me grab some keys and we'll open the covers okay. and then we carry on going. Cool. All right. 
So it's come around this way. Davy, there's no engine in it, mate. Yeah. It's electric. It won't be long, mate. No, not here it won't. <laughs> so, this is the front trunk or frunk. Uh, don't leave milk or chocolate in here because it gets hot. Because you've got a central rad in the middle and then your two side rads. Your battery cover's here. Uh, these get broken a lot, so you'll see it should clip over nicely. But what happens is these pins break off the rivets, right? This one has a CTEP, but basically battery lives back here. Yeah. All right, so batteries, that's the service hatch for battery. You will have a tool kit with a jack. The jack has got a little post. There's a cutout in the sill that this sits through and sits into the chassis. So on eBay, you can buy, if you look it up, R8 Jack Puck, as in ice hockey puck, looks like a puck with a bulge on the top for that. So then you can use a normal trolley jack at home. Don't trust this. They're only to get you out of danger. Don't yeah. sit at home and take your wheels off and stuff because they're not brilliant. Uh, toe and eye, which is under this headlight. So depending on the grill, You'll either, on this, you'll have a little cap here that you pull out. You yep. see it? On the facelifts, the whole section pulls out. So you pull a whole lot out, but that's where Tone Eye lives. So track day, stuff like that, you'll have to put it in. Uh, obviously then you'll get uh, your first aid kit. You'll get a tr your warning triangle. If I can get it out. <laughs> warning triangle. Um, uh, a little spanner, a little screwdriver with a swappable end. All right, you'll get a tire pump. These get robbed a lot. So cigarette lighter, tire pump, yep. good little tool. You will also then should have tire puncher kit and it's got an expiry date. This is empty anyway, so, um, but you use it with the tire pump to pump it into the um, into the tire to block up punches, but you've got to know it's going to fix it. So you've got it's it's more like a slow puncher. Like if you get a big blowout, it's normally not going to do anything. Yeah. Um, that little tool is to help you get the wheel on and off. So when you take a wheel bolt out, take the first wheel bolt out, screw that in, and it helps you get the wheel off without dinking your discs. Very important on ceramics very important easy to chip locking key so you know we've worked on the car because the locking wheel bolt will be adjacent to or opposite the valve and like I go mad at the boys about that they're like proper proper freak about it so that when you're not looking you know where you got to put the locker when you're tightening them up so just one of the things that I know when we've worked on a car you'll then either have depending on the wheels you'll have two types of caps You'll have these spider caps where you need an L-shaped hook to pull it off, which exposes the wheel bolts. Or you'll have the little plastic push-on 70 mil caps yep. like you get on golfs and stuff. So this one's got the little L-shaped tool. If you have the other type of caps, you'll have a little plastic hook puller. So um, if you go and look at one and go and buy it, uh, pull this polystyrene, take the toolkit out and pull this polystyrene holder out because if anything happens to the front, it normally crinkles the floor and you then you can normally tell as well by how the new panel has been put back in. So little carpet piece, obviously number plates, that is CTEC and an oil top up. You've got a 12 volt lighter and a luggage light. You've got your washer fluid and then under here's your brake fluid. So you've got to take this windscreen panel off, this scuttle off to get to your brake fluid. Um, so this is pretty common where they start to corrode. They're expensive to change, they're like five pound a five pound a quarter turn screw. But just make sure the clips, the trims are right. These go missing for fun. These are arch liner seals. And what they stop is they stop everything coming up the wheels going up the inside. 
so make sure they're there they're like 15 quid each you can tell if someone's been a bit playful trying to get them on and off can you see all that gouge in there in a plastic it's a yep. bit wet shall i dry it you know what I mean? you see there and what they've done is they've undone all the all the trim clips and as they've pulled it off they've dragged it up the inside of the bonnet yeah so you can tell how many times it's been off in the past so we're really careful there you'll see the boys normally put a bit of tape on the trim stop it being scratched um there is a lot of talk on r8 talk mainly the american forum forum about the frames cracking it's a load of crap in what are we now 2022 in 15 years i've been working on these i've seen four cars with a cracked front frame oh god i'm sitting leave that in it's fine that'll make the edit wrong number i know that's always the worst um there's a lot of talk on r8 talk which is a big american forum about the frames cracking it's a load of crap for starters in 15 years of working on these i've seen it four times one was a car i crashed um it was on track and someone ran into me and run me off track and i put it in a tire wall damaged the front and i'd cracked the front frame uh the three others had been in crashes so i've only ever seen it happen on crashes and it's where the t the top strut tower um meets the frame and i might try we might pull the cubs off when we get it inside and i'll show you okay it's not a worry i've never worried about it i've never found one cracked we've done loads we've done the on the pre-2009 cars so basically the earlier before the spider was made it's basically a reinforcement plate they put on a spider pre-spider build date the r8s v8s and v10s don't have it and we've welded those plates in loads for people just for their peace of mind i wouldn't worry about it it's not a worry um so that's front trunk um yeah they can do bonnet hinges so it should do that so just make sure um make sure it's pretty free don't use grit white grease we use like wd-40 on all the hinges doors boot lids the lot because all grease does is it just lets the grit and crap stick to the hinges and they're aluminium pins and alumin and they just they corrode up so wd-40 don't use grease like look at the state of that like yep. this so it's just it's just grease so we only ever use wd-40 don't you haven't got to plaster everything in white grease um coming around if you have to change your wiper blades then depending on the year there's two ways of doing it one way is to turn the ignition on ignition off press the wipers down and you go into service mode okay just do that again so ignition on ignition off right if that doesn't work then you've got it in the mfd you've got it in a display and you go through your menu it's normally the earlier v8 you have to go in go into wipers click wipers it'll say service mode select it and it will do the same so that's how you have to do them to change um uh that's how you have to do it to change the wiper blades if you take the front trunk panel off we get this load you take the front trunk panel off and you take the wipers arm to get the scuttle trim off always remember before you put the wiper arms back on turn the ignition on press the wipers once so they re-park and turn the ignition off now you can put the arms on because the motor's parked so we get so many people come in and like the wiper is off has damaged the windscreen or it's damaged the scuttle because they've gone to take the wiper off and the wiper will do this they've done that undone it taken it off now the motor's in the wrong position because oh. it knows where park is yeah so you then put the arm back on where it should be sweep the wipers and it like poosh, wipes out your bonnet or wipes out your a pillar so just be careful with that so it just reset it knows you get a couple of different versions of the dash so you'll see some with white white dials so obviously you know this is a v10 because it's got a v10 on it but um some of the later ones and the pluses they got white dials if i turn that on yeah the very early v8s have a red mfd multi-function display and then the face the later ones have a white and then obviously you get white dials as well okay all right 
then the other thing the other thing to check as well is things like uh, your nav unit if it says CD there instead of media you've got an early one and then media you've got a late one so some people put the later ones in an early car because that media button allows them to have MMI Audi music interface so again if you jump in I'll, I'll get out and I'll show you this has got music interface that's got that little plug socket in there mate you jump in that look at that console <coughs> There she is. Yeah. So the earlier ones, if they've got CD on the media, they can't support that. They'll just have a CD changer in the center. They can't support that um, yeah. that unit. Obviously then, you've got two types of transmission, both based on the L156 Graziano box. You'll either have a manual, six-speed manual, or six-speed R-Tronic, or E-Gear if it's a Lamborghini. They're all the same gearbox. They're just how it's controlled. So it's automated clutch and automated gears, but it's the same manual style gearbox. Um, then you just get varying trim levels. So you'll get like B&O speakers. This has got black inlays rather than carbon. You can get carbon door handles here. Um, then you can get Audi exclusive leather. So you, you'll know it's Audi exclusive because you'll have a chrome badge here. And it was exclusive on it, same on the dash. Um, but that's a lot of the preference stuff. That's you can look at 10 different R8s and there'll be 10 different interior options. Yeah. Um, so this has got jet black uh, door trims. It's got leather, jet, what we call a J surround. So it's a big J piece. It runs all the way here. So it's there to there. So that's a leather J surround, gloss black inlays, gloss black radio surround. Uh, and it's got leather top and leather binnacle. So you can get carbon binnacle you can get carbon windscreen trim. Looks trick, but in the sunlight, it's horrible because you get carbon up your windscreen. You can't see through it. Um, you'll get air cons all the same. The only difference is heated seats. So if you've got, say, GT buckets, you can't have heated seats. They don't come with heated seats. If you've got wing backs, you can or you can't. If you've got these, you can or you can't. So these are electric with uh, pneumatic bolster control, airfield bolster control. So they just do the backrest. Then you've got forward, backwards, front up, front down, back up, back down, and backrest angle. This is nice. It's got Alcantara headlining. That's quite rare. Otherwise, it'd just be that kind of carpety sort of material. Um, and that is about it. People give them a hard time. Oh, cruise control. Sorry. Some have cruise, some don't, but we can retrofit cruise control. Can you see it there, mate? Just here. Some have cruise, just there, look. Some have cruise, some don't. What about steering wheels? Steering wheels, there was not really any options. They were just leather. This has been redone by Royal Steering Wheels, which is a pretty common upgrade, to be fair. It's not that expensive, a couple hundred quid. Uh, the only difference is on the plus, I've got to remember now, on the plus, on the facelifts, it's a fatter wheel. The earlier ones are quite a thin wheel, um, but there's not many steering wheel options. Uh, yeah, and apart from the inside, you'll have B and O. Um, not too much else. The interiors get a bit of a hard time because they're quite bland. Um, it's well equipped. It does all right. The B and O's all right. I mean, it's you know, it's not like a night out in club land, but it will do you all right. The sat nav is crap. Yeah, I mean it's like nearly twenty years old now. Yep. Five digit postcode. Um, so I understand why people change the nav units and they go for uh, either a Pioneer or a Kenwood, but they use um, RTA surround kits. So we deal with them quite a bit. That's a really nice product. Um, so that CNC basically replaces because that's all one unit, all the buttons and the display, and it just lifts out in one unit. Then you slot in the RTA piece and then you can put your cage and everything in. So if you want Apple Play, stuff like that. Um, other than that, it's, I, I don't I don't dislike them. I, I think it's, you know. It's very functional, you know. And it's Audi, mate. Yeah. It's just, do you know what I mean? It's not bling, it's not fancy. As they go on later and later, you start, you could start getting your nice stuff. You know, you go for a plus, so there's a lot more carbon. But, you know, Jack's one's jet black and Alcantara. I, I like it. Yeah. You know what I mean? 
wing back seats if you try and buy wing back seats they're a fortune so r8 wing back seats are emblazoned with the r8 um if you see wing back seats in an r8 without the r8 on them they're not r8 wing backs and you can also tell by where the seat belt buckle is so an r8 wing back it'll look right a non r8 wing back that people have bolted in because they will fit looks wrong it scratches this trim up here because it's pushed it's jacked that way um wing back seats are lovely if you go and look at a gt and you've got gt buckets like they're baller they're like proper buckets um but yeah it's a good place dip you know dip in rear view mirror you know volume There's and really good visibility inside yeah, yeah as well yeah, mega, that's mega. the other thing isn't yeah, it? yeah yeah they're mega you know just i don't know i i like these uh, the best r8 ever made is a gt um which is a gen 1 platform so you know even over mine mine sat there and i'd still have a gt over mine yeah so i love them um this is a lovely one six speed manual three pedals you know screaming v10 what more do you want nice yes then engine bay so you will only ever get on a pre-facelift v10 you will only get one type of airbox joint airbox so whether it's an artronic or a manual it will have this airbox once you go to a facelift and you get a dct transmission an astronic the oil tank sits in the middle because the gearbox sits a lot higher so the oil tank sits in the middle and sits here so you'll have two air boxes and a big long cover you'll know you're looking at that because it's a facelift car other than that nothing's different so whether you buy uh you know it'll look the same the only thing that would look different is this and the oil cap won't be there other than that engine bay trims the same bulkhead trims the same windscreens the same rear lids the same you know that's it 5.2 liter v10 this one's a manual this one's got our air filter kit on it our early style ones um the only difference is you can get obviously that in carbon that in carbon these in carbon and the bulkhead trim in carbon that's it get a little bit of corrosion you can see it starting to come through get a little bit of corrosion starting to come through so pretty common but that that is it not much to say in engine b just as long as it's been well serviced well looked after you know i can sit there and for example i know we've so the way the jubilee clips have been on i can tell whether they've been off you, you know on the v8 people jam the vacuum hoses under the airbox lid the when people take any of these vacuum hoses off and they use jubilee clips we use these single ear clamps that's how audi do it that's how it should be but you can tell when a car's been worked on and then we do certain things where we know we've worked on it yep um so we'll use paint dots a lot on markers or little bits and pieces like that but yeah how we put the exhaust clamps back on we put them on how they should be so no it's pretty cool this one's a bit of a weapon so and then on the back end i know we've got a bumper uh rear lights on a facelift the rear lights look different and they'll have sweeping tails so you can you can tell by the rear lights the center brake lights can squeak so if you're driving along and it goes <laughs> the seals perish in the brake light and the brake light rubs on the paint and get a squeaking noise. So to us noise, we've got lorries behind us, we've had the police going left, right, centre, oh, make oh, it oh. sound like we're in New York, and so. it's also windy, so... Should we put it inside? Hopefully, yeah. Let's get it inside and continue. Right, we've, we've got out of the wind now. Yeah. So it's apologies if it was a bit windy previously. So it should be able to hear us. So normally, say on a service, we bring it in, we do a kind of walk around we just did outside. We would uh undo the oil filter take the cap off um pull a dipstick out uh put it up halfway or put it up get the covers off get it draining come back down so we, we could check the middle of the car so obviously the pain in the backside bit can be you can't see the brakes so whenever we do like brake fluid change or anything like that we take the wheels off and I've got a delivery, so I shall return. <laughs> Hi, mate. You're right. It's not even anything good. No? No. No toys? No, it's definitely next door. Uh, so the boys would uh, put the car up on a ramp, um, 
and if we were say doing like a vehicle inspection we would do the same so i shall use my phone to show you light so four pot brembo caliper here and then handbrake caliper here so straight away look can you see the state of the discs so they're pitted on the inside edge pitted on the outside edge and they've got a bit of a lip Bear on them a second. let's just adjust this Hang on. So, it's not bad huh so the, di go. the disc in pretty poor state all right yeah so the pads we have had them off i have got new brakes to go on it over there the pads aren't horrific they're probably about 60 percent worn but it's not going to make it to the next service so we're not like oh you need to do your brakes we tell the owner in this case the owner's gone you know he's got some drives coming up he likes using the car he just wants to change them so quite preemptive we always do handbrake pads as well for a couple of reasons um when we get it in the air I'll sh when we get it up up i'll show you the inside of the disc are knackered so it always wipes out the inside pad uh, and also you're then putting old pads on new discs um, and the handbrake pads start to degrade on the edges so even though they don't get used under braking they're just a clamp there to hold it and you can see by the sides they haven't got to do much work but what happens is the edges get degrade and they start to crumble away and we get handbrake pads in with no ham with no pad, pad material on them it's just the backing plate so we will do the pins because they rot and break we do handbrake pads we do discs and we'll do the proper pads as well and the sensors so you get it in the air this one doesn't have mag ride because we've converted it off mag ride sure we have um but the biggest concern on all these is mag ride they're now 1400 pound shock right and you'll put them in the air and they'll be wet or misty with fluid i'll get a mag ride shock out now and i'll show you um so just check it over make sure your suspension's dry shouldn't be shouldn't be oil leaking how do you go oh misting shock absorbers that's allowed no it isn't go to any race series in the world or if there's oil leaking out of a shock it's not right and we get some that are on the verge of failing their as well. so just mag ride is a big pet peeve of mine with audi because all basically they don't want to pay for it they're they're shit and they don't want to pay um so we probably convert a car off mag ride one a week now easy um to passives so that's proper r8 suspension he's got his lightsaber so we start at the back obviously rear air guides so these feed air up from the underside of the car to the bottom of the exhaust um they get torn off for fun again not expensive they're about 10 pound each so we replace these quite a bit and then there's certain screws that hold them on so i can go on the underside give me any screw off the underside of this car and hand it to me i'll tell you where it goes because there's different sizes these are shouldered these are washered these are big heads these are shouldered these are short you just you just know the product so I, we can tell whether it's been put together right or not uh, so again you could have a plastic diffuser or a carbon one rear fog lights on r8 rot for fun so pff, half easily half of the cars that come in for service the fog light don't work and it's for one or two reasons either this has happened where it's cracked right and then moisture gets in and does the holder or the water coming up the underside of the car gets in the back of the bulb holder and rots it so we might get away with cleaning the bulb holders eventually it's going to be a fog light so it just depends this one works so it's fine um we obviously report everything but until it sort of fails the customer on in this instance client in this instance is that have a bigger pressing issues to deal with so obviously checking the suspension which we've just discussed these are the oil cooler lines so you can start to see they get a bit grotty again i wouldn't sit there and say you need to change those but it is something i'd sort of note and sort of say you know we need to keep an eye so we keep like a detailed report of the car and we give it to the owner and then when it comes in next time before the car's even got here we'll go oh yeah yeah we'll check trans we would anyway but we kind of know it was a possible issue last time um if you then look to the inside the discs look so they're just rotten the biggest reason this happens is because people wash their cars so they wash their car there's not as big a braking effort done by the rear axle as there is the front so they wash their car they put it away 
the moisture sits on the discs and the pads and it rots the disc just after you wash your car in a disco orange but then because it's like 70 30 split and nobody brakes hard on the roads that it never gets cleaned off and it just gets worse and worse and worse so which is why we're changing all the brakes on this so that's something to keep an eye out for just because they don't they look good on the outside doesn't mean they look good on the inside it's just keeping over that if you're doing an inspection or paying anyone to do an inspection on a car you're buying floors off one two two at the front take them off right because you well, look how much is hidden can't see anything so that's the biggest thing we do uh, oil pipes is another sort of pain in the backside things on these which is one of the problems we have to address on this one so the early cars pretty much up until facelifts they had mild steel powder coated hoses and they did what this one's doing here this is the power steering hose but stones and crap take the powder coating off and then the pipe rots right and it will always go i don't know whether you can quite see in here mate see my finger is so if i pull that heat shielding back now you see the dent the wear mark in it mm. the flat mark in it so what happens is that corrugated pipe rubs through the paint there it rots and leaks and then that just all runs out with oil what's happened on this one is the oil return hose at the top went so we've had to take the arch liner out and then change the oil return hose uh they're about 350 quid a hose on the v10s and there's three of them it is a bigger problem on the v10s and the v8s because the hoses are different on the v8s um so we probably do more v10s than we do v8s uh but yeah it's about 350 quid a hose there's three of them on v10s you've got to drain the oil out so it, luckily in this instance it was in for a service anyway um so yeah if you get anyone do it take covers off gearbox under tray obviously you would look for leaks and bits and pieces the other sort of thing to keep an eye out for is if you stick a light up here mate can you see that shaft here just there there's a yep. seal on the end of it same as your v10 rs6 is and that's the oil pump drive shaft and there's two seals and they can leak so this one's weeping um not enough for us to sort of say you need to take the oil pump off and do it but we would keep an eye on that now we know i'll let jack know and then next time it comes in we see what's what so there you go you can start to see this hose here look so that's the front hose and you can see then the one we've changed this time this one here then what have you got rear jacking points so you'll have the rings and then this is the jacking point i was talking about for your jack in a toolkit so you get a little puck to put on a trolley jack the main reason people do that is because they haven't got a supercar jack to get in that far to get here so if not buy yourself a puck and then that's where the other jacking point is here right behind the wheel inside of that drain inside of that body plug so we just go off there all right uh prop tunnel uh, right in the middle of the prop tunnel about here there's a heater valve for the air conditioning and what that does is is it shuts the coolant flow off through the heat matrix so if you get in your car turn your aircon on and it's blowing hot air the valve's gone just so that's about what 485 quid and again i wouldn't say it's an achilles heel but it's a known issue we we do quite a few of them uh front diff lives under here so gearbox oils every four years diff oils every four years um so you need to take this cover off and this cover off check them over if you put your car on a dyno make sure it's a mechanically linked um or an electronically linked four-wheel drive dyno because it's a viscous coupling that only transfers 120 newton meters of torque uh, if you put it on a crap dyno you'll blow the front diff up you'll basically melt the viscous coupling and you'll have a two-wheel drive car and you'll never know it until it's a rainy day in december and your car swaps ends we see that quite a bit and all, don't we? You drain the oil out of these and it's black. Because yeah. what happens when a viscous coupling overheats, it vents to the gearbox oil. And then you drain the oil out and it's black. So we can tell when we drain them out. So like my Maha is electronically linked, which is fine because it's good enough to do it. Uh, dyno jets are mechanically linked. That'll work. Um, you can't use a hub dyno. 
unless you take the prop off and obviously if you want to do two wheel drive you have to take the prop off but uh, the Artronic won't work on a hub dyno anyway so we, we try to stay away from them then on the front well that's what it should look like brake guard or brake duct and that's what happens they just get wiped out by stones so again four bolts stored it on not an expensive part but just sort of does it in these little bump blocks at the bottom they take a pound in so again a couple of quid not too not too scary so underneath is see what i mean if you don't take covers off it's hidden yep and even like for mot like it going from it here no one takes any of this stuff off to look so yeah uh v10s don't suffer with ball joints v8s do and the problem with v8s is you can't buy v8 ball joints anymore or v8 lower arms so you have to transfer swap the whole suspension to v10 stuff so you've got to be careful there. if you go and buy a v8 we're going to look at a v8 and it's got a bottom ball joint play yeah it's thousands so you've got to be careful i think mate is that think... the uh, underneath done yeah i think so you got anything to add no what else do we any <laughs> wheels or tires or anything like that wheels are good they yeah. can buckle we could so you'll feel like a balance problem and then we send them off to get them refurbed and it turns out they're taking a whack but that's mainly because they're wide i mean you think what are they 11 and uh 11s or 13s what's three three scissors yeah 11 like 11 inch rear wheels so yeah they like your old rs4s used to so a bit like that tires p4s's don't do anything else uh winter pressures we will always set them to 39 36 39 front 36 rear cold uh if summer pressures we always sort of tell 36 front 33 rear and if you're going on track 32 29 and then see where you sit depending on what tires you run so that is what obviously we've got the wheels off so we can do the brakes but yeah these cause problems we don't have problems with our upper or bottom arms. Never even done a wheel bearing, have we really? They're pretty solid on wheel bearings. Um, we see people put the anti-roll bar links on back to front and you get funny noises. So they'll put the link over the top of the bar. I don't know how, because it's like impossible to get bolt in because um, of the angle it's at, but that's normally when it's had an exhaust. Um, yeah, the biggest thing we probably struggle with on all of them is getting the T30s out. We go through T30 sockets I reckon my snap-on man's kept in business because of how many we go through. They, honestly, they're terrible, aren't they? So we copper slip all of them going back in, but we'll battle, we'll battle loads. And because ones like up in here are riv nutted into the body, people go winding them in with windy guns or with battery guns, they corrode or they're too tight, they're over tightened. And when you try and undo them, they, um, they spin a riv nut in the body. So then you've got to like cut the arch liner to get to get the to get it out so just stuff like that i mean if you if you go into audi like audi will do like their pre-purchase inspection we come to us for pre-purchase inspection then we'll tell you all this stuff but it's easy to buy an r8 that needs a couple of little things that get expensive like rear brakes 1500 quid so like nearly 500 quid a disc if you need a mag ride shock 1400 pound so this is why everyone's converting to passives because by the time you've bought two mag ride shocks because you should do them in pairs um you can have all four and a set of mag ride deletes so just spend your money wisely if you're going to look at one they're brilliant cars and they don't really go wrong what i would say is is they can have little niggles that start to get bigger and bigger and bigger so just stay on top of it um yeah we've got so many customers that are meticulous with their cars um so i'd always say if you're looking for one give us a shout we always know of someone selling a plus a v8 a manual a spot you know good cars that we look after so we get a lot of calls now as well of people going to look at cars that we've worked on so um no i would say the biggest problems they suffer shocks and oil pipes on v10s uh v8s shocks oil pipes a little bit less but we still do have oil pipe issues what else Mm, see quite a few rocker cover problems on v8s don't we rocker cover leak in um so again 20 quid a gasket except for the very early v8 where you can't get the left gasket you have to buy the left rocker cover because it's a completely reworked um pcv uh and if you are buying a v8 just make sure the bottom ball joints or top ball joints are mint because 
unless you send the arms off to VPS in Poland, you're buying V10 suspension because they don't make the V8 ball joints anymore. Um, they're different sizes, so the hub's different. And because the hub's different, the wheel bearing's different. And so other than that, just buy a good one. Get it checked. Good as gold. They don't use oil. What do you, what do you reckon? They don't burn oil, do they? But you'll probably go a litre of oil every thousand to 1,400 miles. Don't really leak coolant. Don't really use hydraulic. Mate, they're mint, are not they? They're good as gold, generally. They are very good. So just buy a good one. Buy it. Don't go and buy bargain basement. I'd say that all the time. You're better off spending 10 grand on a better car than you are buying the cheapest car and then finding out even after you spent 10 grand on that one you're still a mile off so yeah just get a good that should give you an overview of kind of stuff you're looking at but just get a good inspection done Audi are pretty good obviously we'll do them but I understand that if you're buying a car from Leeds transporting a car here for us to check it is a, is a pain but yeah just get a good check over then but we loves them happy days Better than our sixth video, that, isn't it, mate? <laughs> your, uh, your glass is definitely half full. Yeah. Yeah. Not Mr. Miserable. Excellent stuff. That's Carl's job. Right. So, on that note, we'll see you for part three, V8 one. We'll do a V8 one. Yeah. And then a plus and a Gen 2. And, and then we might introduce uh, another little project that you've uh, acquired. <sighs> I know. What have I done now? Watch this space. Yeah. But my Gen 2's for sale if anyone wants to buy it. It's mint. Now that is a minter. Okay. But it's on auto trader. So. Cool. See you later. Cheers, bud.